Thank you for turning to page 121. Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a little game break from D&D, and we're going to play a little Gamma World. Uh, we used to do this periodically. We still do. We don't play D&D every single week. We take a break and we play some other game. Gamma World was my first alternate game after I discovered D&D. This box is from the 1981 reprint of the 78 edition. I bought it in 81, and as you can see, it's been much loved. Gamma World is a very fun game that's very compatible to D&D. I'm not positive what all came in this originally. What I have left is my Gamma World rule booklet, a referee screen, which I believe I bought separately, and of course the map of Gamma Terra. Gamma World is a post-apocalyptic game. In the original iterations, there's Gamma Terra. Basically just the United States map with all the cities removed and a grid system, not unlike the world of Greyhawk map. We always played right around here, the tip of the uh, now expanded Lake Michigan, uh, as we were all from the Chicagoland area, so we always played right there. The idea behind Gamma World is that the world has suffered a catastrophic final war, and lots of uh, bombs and radiation have gone flying, and obviously this is a Cold War offering. And the radiation, of course, has mutated a lot of stuff, and... We now live in a world that's no longer our own. We live in a Gamma world. This was a lot of fun. This game was based on J uh, James Ward's Metamorphosis Alpha, which was basically a giant colonizing uh, generation starship that was traveling through space and had some things go wrong, had radiation released again, and various monsters were uh, created and unleashed in the starship. This is simply the same game just put on the Gamma world onto Earth itself. This game had a lot of fun. It was compatible with D&D in a lot of ways. In fact, in the DMG, there's a breakdown on how to play Gamma World using D&D rules and vice versa. But as I'll go into it in a little bit, there were some significant differences. Uh, Gamma World, first and foremost, you get to choose what type of monster you're, or uh, sorry, character you're going to be, not a monster. And the character is, in the original edition, a pure strain human. There's a human who's survived through uh, various genetic uplifts and things before the final war. They've survived very, largely untainted by any of the radiation or other genetically damaging things. Therefore, they are as close to human as anybody was before the war, hence pure strain human. Uh, they don't get any mutations, which I'll discuss in a moment, but they are a little more durable and... Uh, a little more recognized by old tech. Then you have a uh, mutated human, basically a mutant. The idea here is that you get to roll on the mutant table. This is the mutant table. There's a version of it in the booklet, but this one's a little easier to see. And each mutation is explained in the booklet. You get mental mutations and physical mutations. You can actually get some great combinations out of these. And... Uh, the third type is you could be a mutated plant. That is a sentient plant who may or may not be able to move on its own. I actually had one player character playing a mobile plant, and they had to carry the pot around with them. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. The main attraction to Gamma World for my players, and for me, was the fact that uh, while it was based on the 3DI6 system from uh, TSR for D&D, there weren't any alignments. You could pretty much freewheel and do whatever you wanted in this game like the original D&D or the basic set before it, where alignments were introduced into ad and I thought ad and was saved by the introduction of alignments, but I also think the game world is a lot more fun without them. So basically, there's no alignments. You can uh, be whatever you want to be monster-wise if you want to, and uh, you get a lot of hit points. Each character starting out game world starts with one die six, per point of constitution. So if you have a 12 constitution, you roll 12 die six, no re-rolls, and that's how many hit points you start the game with. That's what I said. It's not really that compatible with AD and D because you can have a starting player character with, in Gamma World with 60 hit points. Uh, on the other hand, D and D characters brought to Gamma World are terribly fragile since they'll be walking around with eight or 10 hit points. They'll get killed very quickly. Damage is very high in Gamma World when you have ray guns and things like that.
Gamma World has, uh, the idea of the Gamma World game is much like D&D. It's basically always dungeon crawls. You're going through the ruins looking for artifacts that'll work. In this case, the artifacts are the magic items. And when you find a ray gun that works, now you have to worry about power cells. Think of charges in D&D. So very similar in play, but very different in execution as far as the level of hit points and the actual power level of the player characters. It was just a fun game. This is a, a great booklet that gives most of what you need. This game went uh, until they did a new edition in 82. I would be happy to show you that one, but I realized as I started making this video that that one's currently on loan to my son at college who is running some Gamma World for his friends. So I can't show you the 82 box set as I don't have it. I have it, don't have it with me. This is the third edition box set that was published in 1983 or 86. This meant, went more with the Marvel superheroes uh, style of combat where it was uh, percentage dice and it was on a sliding chart, uh, the color chart. This too came with the booklet, uh, Chance to Join the RPGA. A reference book, this reference book was to repair a lot of the editorial uh, errors in the original booklet. This obviously is a later print. Uh, I wasn't an early adopter on a lot of the off-brand D&D &D games or things offered by TSR simply because a lot of their games had errors in them. And here is a look at the action chart that was used. I tried this one. Uh, frankly, I never liked the combat system. Uh, forgive me, Marvel Super Heroes fans, but I was never a fan of that combat system. So I can't... Uh, really advocate the this third edition set i i was never a fan of it uh i thought it was too clumsy and i thought it lost a lot of the flavor however a lot of the modules that were published with this gave great background that was adaptable right back into first or second <clears throat> so having gone through third we're going to take a look at the next edition of gamma world to come out Oh, which also is at college with my son. My apologies. So we're going to go straight to Alternity. The Alternity Gamma World. This was published in 2000, pretty much around the time they killed the Alternity line, which is a shame because I thought the Alternity line was pretty good. It had some nice products and uh, very high quality books. Uh, I enjoyed Alternity. We played that for a while in our campaign. We tried out this Alternity Gamma World, but honestly... The second and fourth editions are the, uh, the ones that are fun. I wish I had my fourth. That's the, the one that we ended up playing on a steady basis. But again, that one's on leave to my uh, son at college. And then the last edition I bothered with was the D20 edition. And this is out in about 02 through 04 from Sword and Sorcery Studios, uh, part of the open license for D&D, &D was the Gamma World d20 system this plays pretty well if you like d20 uh i don't like it much for dnd but i actually played d20 for gamma world and for traveler uh, i do like it for both those games uh this is a, a pretty fun game and a ton of interesting background the only thing with this one is it uses uh nanotechnology uh, instead of radiation because by this time people have realized radiation mostly just made you sick uh, didn't give you spider powers, but uh, it lost some of the whimsy. It became a little more serious than what I like my Gamma World to be. Gamma World is a gosh wow, shoot 'em up, have fun kind of thing. But they did publish six books, and there's some really nice background in these. They you have the dungeon or the game master's guide. Sorry, old habit. The player's handbook. Machines and mutants. This expands on the basic character classes. Beyond the Horizon, which is just some more stuff on Gamma Terra. Cryptic Alliances and Unknown Menaces. Cryptic Alliances in place of kingdoms. Uh, you mostly have Cryptic Alliances. These are different ideologies that have banded together. You have machinists who are trying to promote uh, technology as the, the way of the future. Uh, there are many, many uh, the, uh, Sons of Entropy. I've even made up a couple. So 
basically they're the bad guys or the group you're allied with, depending on what they are. There's another group called the healers that just go around and healing, healing people, no matter who they are, what their source, what their ideology is. And then the last book in this set was out of the vaults. The idea of out of the vaults is just the vaults that hold all the ancient tech. So this is uh, basically a tech book for Gamma World for this edition. Uh, again, has some pretty good stuff. D20 is not that hard to adapt to older stuff. I've adapted much of uh, the D20 stuff that I own for D&D &D back into AD&D. It's just not that hard a translation. So these are the various versions. There was a 7th seventh, seventh edition version of Gamma World published that was based on D&D 4th edition. I didn't bother with that one. I didn't like the look of it. I didn't really like where they took it. Uh, if they got into alternate realities, slopping over to ours. Uh, it just it didn't have the same flavor. So I, I took a pass on that one. So that's just a quick look at Gamma World. It was a lot of fun. Uh, not having alignments, let everybody kind of uh, untie their shoes a little bit and have some fun, do whatever they wanted to do. Uh, we tended to run campaigns that were short-lived. Uh, with larger groups, you end up with a lot of player character infighting over artifacts and treasure. Uh, but still, this was a lot of fun. I, I really missed playing this game on a regular basis. I had two friends that I played the, this with all the time in the early 80s. Uh, I still trot it out now and again, and my players really enjoy it. We'll play two or three games in a row where we'll do nothing but uh, tear around Gamma Terra and uh, just get all kinds of goodies and do whatever we feel like. If we had a bad day at work that day, we don't have to worry about alignment. We just go ahead and we we have some fun with Gamma World. So Gamma World is uh, one of the alternate games we used to play and still do play uh, when we needed a break from D&D. I'm going to do a couple of videos in the future talking about other games that we still play now and again to uh, take a break from D&D. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time on page 121. Well, that closes the book on another episode of page 121. Please leave your comments below, and if you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.